Hey guys, what's up? Sando here. I missed you and I hope you missed me as well. I'm back and hopefully new content will be coming sooner rather than later. My wife got a surgery last week and I needed to take a week off so I could uh, help her out around the house. She'll probably walk again in around two to three months, uh, meaning that I'll need to film all my future reviews in this period of time in my office. Yep. So today I'm going to review what I believe is a great sounding DAC and DDC converter. So please meet the Gustav X18 and U18 DDC converter. So X18 might look like, uh, you know, like X16, so they're looking very similar, but uh, this is a very different animal altogether. It's all analog and digital uh, sections were rebuilt from the ground up. So this is a very different device uh, in many ways. X18 goes for 750 bucks and U18 for 500 bucks and it's time to check them out. Design-wise, as I've said, X18 looks uh, very similar to that X16, with the exception that uh, X18 has right now an on-off button that was not present on X16. I'm glad to see the best aluminum fit in the business and a thick CNC machined metal case. There isn't a visible screw on this one, only on its back panel. It's painted in matte black and you can have it in matte silver if you please. Overall, it looks simple and modern, and there is nothing to complain about its build quality. As for controls, as you can see, it has a very simple front panel with just a monochrome OLED screen in the middle, an on-off button to its left, and a volume wheel to its right. A short press on that wheel will select your desired digital input, and a long press will engage its user menu, where additional settings can be unlocked. On its back, you can spot a wide variety of digital inputs as USB, I2S, optical, coaxial, and AAC. It's a fully balanced DAC, so it offers XLR and RCA outputs. There's a Bluetooth antenna socket, an AC inlet, and an on-off switch. As for tech inside it, X18 uses higher grade DAC chips compared to the X16, so they went with ES9038 Pro DAC chip. And that one can be programmed very, very differently. So it can work in mono mode, stereo mode, or eight channel mode with either voltage or current mode operation. And of course, most ES Sabre designs are being used in stereo mode with voltage mode operation because that is uh, considerably cheaper. So you don't need as many op amps. You don't need an IV conversion stage. The cost goes down. And of course, the performance goes down as well. However, if you want to squeeze maximum performance out of ES9038 Pro, you need to use it in 8-channel mode with current output mode. And that's exactly what uh, Gooster did with the X18. So it has 8 op amps at the IV conversion stage, and those are the OPA1612 op amps, which are regarded as slightly warmer, slightly smoother sounding compared to LME op amps. There's a linear and regulated 20-watt transformer inside, some really nice uh, AcuSilicon femtosecond clocks. There's a Bluetooth receiver that supports all the nicest codecs and an MQA decoder is also on board. So how does the newest X18 is sounding more exactly? So considering the slight disappointment that I had with X16, especially lacking cojones in the bass, lacking some mid-range presence and having that B-dimensional sound feel that couldn't stretch that wide, I really didn't know what to expect out of Gustav's newest converter, but I'm glad to report that it comes much, much closer to their X26 Pro rather than to X16 because there is finally a nicer bass punch. I could definitely feel that uh, my Electronica tunes are more engaging sounding. There is more sub bass information. There is slightly more mid range presence as well because I could feel that the voices are just more lifelike sounding in a way. And finally, there is just more air in between the notes. I could definitely feel that I have more music in my room when I'm listening to my loudspeakers. Almost everything felt improved on X18. So there is definitely a higher engagement factor. There is more sub bass information. There is a warmer tonality. I could feel that my music speaks to me, you know, uh, easier right now. 
And while retaining the same cleanness, the same noiseless performance, the same detailed retrieval of X16 that, mind you, was very impressive in this department. While system matching was quite a crucial aspect on X16, that's no longer the case with X18. You no longer need a beastly amplifier to unleash that bass and mid-range delivery because it already does that on its own, uh, which is, of course, a great I can rarely attribute words as natural sounding to ESS Sabre Silicon, but with a careful selection of components, I believe that everything is possible. And when such silicon is working in current output mode rather than in voltage output mode, something just happens with my music. It just flows more naturally. So there is a higher dynamic range, there is a higher engagement factor, and I can certainly say that X18 is such a DAC, such a converter. They tried mimicking the sound of X26 Pro as much as possible with this one, and I can certainly say that it has more natural overtones compared to X16. Uh, it started growing on me, proving that good Sonics can be had even at less than 1000 bucks. Then I wanted to know if that U18, this one, DDC converter, will be improving X18's performance. First, you should know that current production DACs already have pretty amazing digital boards, but the USB standard was never conceived as an audiophile no compromise solution because the source noise is still being passed through those USB cables. There are even timing errors that are plaguing most laptops and desktop PCs. Uh, most wireless streamers already moved to I2S standard and some of them even have word clock BNC connectors and U18 has them all, so that is already great. Now about uh, U18, it has a uh, galvanically isolated USB board, so all the noise that is coming from your PC, from your laptop, from your Mac will be stopped by U18, that was already great. Secondly, it has the best Aku silicon clocks in production, those are AS338. And lastly, it has a clock synthesizer that was made by Gustard that syncs its already amazing, super amazing clocks uh, with the clocks that are sitting in your DAC. So it makes a handshake, uh, removing all those timing errors, all those noises that is coming from your source. So that is already amazing. After connecting them both via I2S, the absolute first thing that struck me is that X18 became even more natural sounding. So there was definitely a little bit more flow that was not present before. And X18 by itself is quite open, quite, you know, quite wide sounding, and yet U18 added even more air in between those notes. And from a 3D sounding DAC, uh, X18 became just more holographic sounding. And open by headphones like this one, like Suzwara, I don't know if you can see them, uh, they cannot really simulate the air travel in the room like loudspeakers are doing, and yet I felt immediately that there was, uh, you know, more air in between those notes. Um, I could follow easier all those musical notes, something that wasn't so easy uh, with the X18 alone. On less than perfect recordings, X18 can add some... Um, unwanted ringing in the treble, maybe a higher pitch in the treble, but after adding that U18 into the chain, uh, it just removed all that grain, I couldn't spot listening fatigue. So if you ever tried an art wire ladder duck and you already know how natural, how smooth those can sound with acoustic music, that is exactly what U18 is doing to X18 and to any other duck. It just revitalized that X18 and transformed it from good to great sounding. Moving on to my stereo setup, when X18 was working only as a DAC only unit, leaving preamp duties to other components, I've got exactly what I was expecting. So it was again quite engaging sounding. It was open and wide sounding. I could easily follow all those musical notes. I could easily focus on them without too much trouble. It was by a hair smaller sounding compared to the X26 Pro and less impactful as well, but all other traits remained intact and I was quite surprised by its uh, resolving, highly resolving abilities, so it was very clean, very detailed sounding. ESS Sabre converters would never conquer my heart when it comes to depth, you know, imaging, when it comes to warmth, uh, mid-range presence. Uh, but I guess with the right components, everything is possible. 
Then I let it work as a DAC and preamplifier combo, and immediately I felt that some naturalness went down by a notch, uh, some bass oomph was lost in transit, but everything else as transparency, as speed, as control of the drivers remained intact. So I played the guess game with and without a dedicated preamplifier, like this one, like Fair War, and there was, uh, there was a difference with a preamplifier, it sounded better, but it wasn't so big to, to warrant getting a dedicated preamplifier. It was a bigger difference with entry to mid-level converters, but with uh, X18 it was so, so different, so I personally wouldn't get a dedicated preamplifier with a unit like this. While X18 doesn't have an actual line amplifier circuit, I'm glad that Gustard boosted that voltage output from 4 volts on X16 to 5.0, 5.2 volts on X18, meaning that you'll be getting slightly more headroom, slightly more power from audio amplifiers, uh, be them headphone amplifiers, integrated or power amplifiers. Moving on to Transients, its predecessor was lacking nerve, it was lacking a bad attitude. X16 wasn't that bad, but with an X26 Pro near it that was bringing the thunder with electronic and rock tunes, it wasn't that impressive. And I'm glad to say that X18, the newest one, sits somewhere in the middle, so it feels like a poor man's X26 Pro, so coming very close to it, but not exactly on the same level, but of course much higher compared to uh, X16. My biggest complaint that I have with X16 was finally taken care of, as finally my rock and electronica tunes unleashed their might without the need of uh, expensive amplifiers. From two op amps on X16, Gustard added six more for a much more powerful output stage. And of course, uh, when Dynamics tried reaching their peaks, that was felt just immediately. Long story short, it seems that X18 preserved the speed and decay of its smaller brother, but this time around it gathered more muscle mass, just delivering harder punches in the bass, and that's exactly what I wished for. When it comes to detailed retrieval, it's actually very, very simple. So if you, everything you wish for are high levels of transparency, uh, then you don't need to invest in four digits uh, converters because X18 got that fully covered. Its predecessor was already mighty impressive in this department, but X18 took that concept one step further, just reaching a similar performance with uh, pricier and much pricier converters. Even without that U18 DDC in place, X18 was able to push forward just crazy amounts of macro and micro details, just unearthing absurd amounts of uh, information from my tunes. After connecting it to some world-class headphone amplifiers, words like clinical, like boring, like uninteresting would never appear on my lips, as from an ultra-linear converter, the final outcome was a rich and full-bodied experience. I wasn't the biggest fan of X16's two and a half dimensional soundstage. I could easily pinpoint the location of those notes, but I wasn't surrounded by a heavy dense fog of sounds that was happening on X26 Pro. X18 by comparison to its smaller brother adds a little bit more oomph in the bass, a higher mid-range presence, and I just felt that there are more sounds with me in the room when I was listening in my stereo setup. With U18 in place, with the DDC converter, I felt that I simply opened my windows towards my music. There was a layer of refinement of effortlessness that was present that I was not getting with the X18 alone. As for the soundstage itself, if you are listening to plenty of live records, then you can feel that more air is gathering around you. And if you are listening to cozy blues, you can feel that you are staying on stage with the musicians themselves, so it really depends on the music, on your setup, on your preference. If your loudspeakers are fully driven, then X18 will be unleashing its big guns, pushing those notes around you and enveloping you fully. Moving on to frequency response, my biggest gripe with X16 was its lightweight, almost ethereal sounding bass performance. It simply lacked oomph, it lacked bass punch, and I'm happy to report that X18 has a beefier analog stage and that simply improved its bass performance. So hearing impressive sub-bass notes is no longer science fiction with uh, X18, as even blues are sounding fuller and weightier with 
with the newest converter. X18 is simply more powerful in here, so it's clean, it's impactful, it's speedy sounding. Forget about muddiness or distortion that you will never get with X18. So, if you're searching for a DAC that puts a higher emphasis on the low end delivery, that tries to be fun and engaging, then I believe that X18 is that unit. If you are hunting for warmth, for a lot of smoothness in the mid-range, then it will disappoint you a little because I find it clean, defined, but uh, it's not really soul grabbing in here. It's not really uh, overly dense, overly smooth sounding in the mid-range. That it will never do. Traces of warmth were still present. Uh, voices sounded quite, uh, quite alive, but uh, it was mostly linear, mostly neutral sounding in the mid-range. But if you want slightly more meat on the bone, if you want slightly more soul in your music, nothing does it better than that uh, U18 DDC converter. It was uh, quite a change in the mid-range. ESS Sabre converters are extremely potent in the treble, so I won't be too flowery in this department. Treble heads will definitely appreciate its ability to show off everything that is happening in the treble, even past top octave. So percussion work, bells, uh, tambourines, everything was, you know, clean, defined. X18 sounded a little brighter, maybe a little metallic sounding in the first days, but a week later that is no longer the case. Its predecessor was a little fake sounding, a little metallic sounding in the treble, but that is not really the case with uh, X18. All in all, I've got a fuller tonality, a denser mid-range, a stronger bass performance that transformed X18 in some of the best converters below 1000 bucks. Moving on to my conclusions, you are looking at a unit that was as transparent and as detailed as some of the best DAX that I tried at my place. It's fully loaded with a lot of goodies, so you are getting a full MQA decoder. The best Bluetooth codecs are also on board. Plus, it's a fully balanced DAC and preamplifier with endless possibilities. Gustard seems to be learning fast from their past mistakes and everything that I dislike about X16 was taken care of with the newest device. And for all of the reasons combined, I believe that it fully deserved my silver award and I consider it as still at 750 bucks. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. My full in-depth review can be found below, please check it out. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it. And as usual, listen to my music, be positive, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!